So welcome to part six of the basic module in network security. What we'll be talking about here is network-based detection of malware and botnet activities. So um, when we're talking about network-based detection, we can actually do this in different points in the network. The most important is that uh, we have uh, traffic uh, coming through this point and we are able to analyze it, the traffic in that particular point. So that could take place in different places. Um, if it is a company, it could play, take place in, in a point from where all the traffic goes to the, to the internet, or it could be traffic uh, even on the internal network. It could be in a home where we have an internet gateway, then install it close to the internet gateway on some, uh, just on the side of it. Or it could be different places, even in ISP networks, um, given that we're able to handle this large amount of data. But it could be all the, all the traffic, for example, which is sent from the ISP to some uh, peering provider. Um, it's important to, to uh, when we're talking about network traffic and saying that we want to analyze network traffic, it's also important to understand what it is that we want to analyze, because we can do this at different levels. So we can do it, for example, at packet level. So we look at each individual packet and see is this packet malicious or not. We can do it at a flow level. So we look at each different flow and see if the flow is malicious or not. And there's quite different approaches to it. And there's different kind of information that we have available. And just to, do, to illustrate these um, different levels that we can talk about, uh, I can show you a multi-level model for worldwide web traffic, for example. So assume that we are looking for a pattern in, in the behavior. Then what kind of pattern are we looking for? And how can we describe these patterns? So it could be that you, are, that you are at an application level, that you are doing web browsing, so you are opening up your browser, uh, you're closing it again, then you don't do anything for a while, and then you start a web browsing session again, and then close it down. But within a web browsing session, actually multiple things can happen. So uh, let's look at an individual uh, session then, um, or what is called here in the figure, a dialogue. So you're looking at one web page. So you take down one web page, then you think for a while, and then you uh, click on the next web page, open another web page, and you think for a while, and then you close it down. So then you can say how long, that, so here the statistical information could be, uh, how often do you visit a new website, how long are you staying on the website, and so on. But again, you can go down one more level. So even within this um, web page, you can see that there is different kind of objects on the web page. So when you open a new web page, you will have the whole web page, and then you will download images, uh, videos, uh, text, uh, frames, and so on, content, which is still within the same website. So here you can talk about a session where you have, yeah, uh, downloading the whole web page. And then when you have downloaded it all, then you start this user thing time. So we will, so describing this, um, you can say web browsing session we have here would be very diff, diff, different if you look at it from an application dialogue or session point of view. Um, we can also take a look at a more general level, uh, basically showing the same. So you can say, okay, our connection to the network, how can we, at, at, at which different levels can we observe that? So it could be that you're connected to the network or not connected to the network. That would be the connectivity level. Then you can do, go down to the application level and say, yeah, but now I'm connected to the network and I'm running different applications. So you could be running one application and at the same time you could be running another application. You would stop the first one, you would start another one and so on. So there is an application level and a pattern in that. And within each application, that can be, for example, a client-server dialog, where you have uh, that you are sending some request. It could again be the web page. So you're sending the request for a website. You're waiting for the reply. You're waiting for some time. You're starting up another session where you're asking for a request, uh, asking for a request and getting a reply back. Within each uh, such session, you would then have um, some data burst. So assume that you are downloading a some amount of data. Then you are saying, okay, how much data am I downloading? How long time does it take to download it? But again, within that, you can break it down further and looking at the at the, the data packets, for example, how long they are, what are the inter arrival times between them, how many packets is going in one direction, in another direction, um, and so on. 
So you can look at this at many different levels. Usually what we are doing is that we are looking at flows. So we are looking at packets which are sent, be sent between the same pair of machines, so the same IP addresses, um, using the same ports and the same protocol. So if you are doing this within the same session, we would say this is, this is a single flow. So what uh, I have shown here on the address is that I have some local IP that could be my own uh, computer at home, which is communicating with three different remote uh, servers. Uh, one could be just uh, one, it's, uh, one uh, session uh, and one flow, but to another I could communicate, if I'm communicating to different ports, I would also be communicating with different flows. So even with this definition, I could have multiple flows going to and from the same machine. And quite often uh, you would discuss, for example, in a web browsing session where you are getting um, the web page, but it's broken into objects, then you can discuss, is this one flow that you have all the information or would it be different flows? But in case, even if it is, uh, you can say triggered by the same, if the conversation is using different ports, According to our definition here, that would be different flows. Um, so within the flow, we will then try to distinguish between a malicious flow and a non-malicious flow. And the, the statistics or the features that we can use to describe the different flows could be some of those that are listed here. So number of ingoing packets, number of outgoing packets, average packet links, links of first packet, social number of bytes, protocol used, and so on. Um, of course, you can also use uh, IP addresses and port numbers to describe the flows, but as we'll get back to in a moment, we have to be quite careful not to, uh, uh, yeah, not to introduce bias into our, our data. So based on what I've been saying now about flows um, and about detection at different levels, please take quiz number 12 and then see you soon. Thanks.